ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your president and CEO at the National Shooting Sports Foundation, Steve Sinetti. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Before we begin tonight, I need to thank some very special people who have done so much to support the National Shooting Sports Foundation in its efforts to promote, protect, and preserve hunting and the shooting sports. We, we thank the Board of Governors for their contributions and guidance during the past year. And I'd also like to thank our sponsors and our all-time record number of 13,000 members, including manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers, ranges, the advisory councils, firearm safety instructors, outdoor media, conservation organizations, gun clubs, all of you who make up the National Shooting Sports Foundation. And last, but certainly not least, to the hardworking NSSF staff, those here tonight in the back, and those in our Connecticut and Washington, D.C. offices. All of them and all of you have given so much to the growth, prosperity, and protection of hunting and shooting sports by responsible Americans. We sincerely thank you. Now, we meet tonight at the very beginning of a crucial election year, both for our industry and for our nation. After over eight solid years of record numbers of good people from diverse backgrounds flocking to our industry to become new firearms owners, while at the same time crime with firearms and firearms accidents plunged by double digits to record 44-year lows, our nation has, unfortunately, seen a spike in violence in a number of our cities and a rise in fear of these highly politicized crimes. Now, the reasons for this are, as always, are a combination of many factors. Gangs, drugs, poverty, and mental illness have all contributed to this unfortunate and tragic situation. And we all pray this will be a temporary situation. But we have to face the fact that our industry is being blamed and attacked and pilloried unfairly by politicians, media, and agenda-driven social engineers seeking a convenient scapegoat for the result of policies which, ironically, they themselves have championed. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the state of our industry is, and must be throughout this year, alert. Because for the very first time, we have seen candidates for the highest office in our nation overtly attack our industry, America's oldest, the one which proudly supplies our nation's armed forces, law enforcement, hunters, target shooters. The only one that sells constitutionally protected consumer products which require an FBI or state police background check to purchase at retail. The one with the very best record of reducing accidents through long-standing industry safety programs. And the one which the majority of law-abiding citizens respect as an American institution which can provide, as a last resort, the means to protect families from violent criminals who ignore the over 20,000 federal, state, and local laws governing the manufacture, sale, ownership, and use of firearms. Those who exploit these tragedies and attack us, either for their own political ends or for an understandable desire to make sense out of the senseless acts, make no pretense about their goals. And this, in turn, forces us to respond to reply to deliberate and ignorant falsehoods with the truth, and to educate the public and the media using all the means at our disposal. Our fellow citizens look to us and to you to know the facts about this subject because it so affects your daily life and your livelihood. So let's address just a few of these false claims so we're all armed with the truth, so we can correct misconceptions and rebut these widely repeated myths. We've been told, for example, our industry does nothing for gun safety. Yet between the manufacturers and the NSF's Project Child Safe, we've distributed over 100 million free gun locks and safety education materials 
in cooperation with law enforcement in over 15,000 communities in all 50 states during the last 15 years. Over 1,200 industry partners have signed on to our Own It, Respect It, Secure It program, and the Project Child Safe Foundation now can accept charitable contributions from anyone who wishes to advance true gun safety, not gun control. Incredibly, some of the gun control groups actually object to our saving lives with this program because we don't agree with their politics. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is the definition of placing politics over safety. And so much for their often repeated claims that if it saves just one life, it's worth doing. Look at the facts. Fatal firearms accidents have dropped 31% during the last 10 years to a century-long low, and less than 1% of all fatal accidents now involve firearms, just about the lowest percentage of all accidental fatalities, according to the National Safety Council. But you never hear that. The gun controllers castigate us for not supporting proposals that don't work and which would not have prevented the recent highly publicized criminal shootings. But had the guns used in those cases been properly secured with the means that industry provides so that unauthorized or mentally disturbed individuals couldn't access them, these tragedies would not have occurred. So who is advocating common sense, effective safety practices? Them or us? They say all we want to do is sell guns to anyone and everyone. But our Project Child Safe brochure says, if for any reason you are uncomfortable or unable to accept the responsibilities that come with owning a firearm, we strongly urge you not to own a firearm. And when have you heard of any other industry urging people not to own its product if they don't want to meet their responsibilities? And when we tried to put up our Project Child Safe safety message in Ronald Reagan National Airport in our nation's capital, we were refused permission. Too political, they said. Us? Our Don't Lie for the Other Guy retailer and consumer education program also urges potential buyers not to buy and retailers not to sell firearms for someone who's not legally entitled to own one. Does that sound like an uncaring industry? It's too easy for mentally disturbed individuals to get their hands on a gun, they say. So who has been actively working with state governments to stop unauthorized individuals from purchasing firearms at retail? Once again, it's the firearms industry. Our Fix NICS program has gotten over 12 states to belatedly comply with existing law and to input appropriate records to make that instant retail point of, sec back, point of sale background check the effective tool to stop unlawful purchases that Congress intended. Yes, once again, we're the ones doing the job. More sellers of guns need to be licensed, they say. Yet it was President Bill Clinton who drastically reduced the number of FFLs because he claimed he wanted to stop crime and only actual businesses should have FFLs. Well, now they say even occasional sellers or transferers of firearms to friends and family should be licensed to stop crime. More licenses? Fewer licenses? They don't know. A recent Chicago study of where gang members get guns found that sales from licensed retailers were a statistically insignificant source. Criminals get guns from other criminals because they're criminals. Trading in older, illegal guns, far removed from the legitimate channels our industry serves. And you heard it here, some falsely claim that our industry is totally immune from liability, unlike any other. That is just not true. Firearms come under exactly the same product liability laws for defective products as any other consumer product. And as you know, if a retailer knowingly sells a firearm to someone not legally qualified to buy it, they can lose their license, pay a stiff fine, and go to jail for up to 10 years. It's the law. It was the anti-gun city mayors wishing to scapegoat us for their crime problems who unsuccessfully tried to establish a wholly unprecedented and unique new legal liability against our industry by suing us. 
But no industry in the world has ever been held liable for the subsequent criminal misuse of a lawfully sold, non-defective product long after it left the manufacturer's control. And every single court which finally ruled on this question has summarily dismissed it. And Congress agreed. Gun control groups disingenuously lump suicides, which are actually about two-thirds of all firearms fatalities, into the category of gun violence in order to fool people into thinking that mass shootings, homicides, and accidents are an epidemic. But this industry has not neglected suicides either. We've been working with the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs and suicide prevention groups and furnishing them free locks and safe storage information. Now, of course, it's impossible to know precisely if a person is suicidal. But once again, properly securing firearms when they're not in use so they're inaccessible to mentally disturbed or depressed individual has been a cornerstone of the industry's genuine gun safety campaign for decades. I could go on, but we just don't have time to list all the effective programs your industry has undertaken over many years to promote the safe and responsible use of firearms. You can see many of them on our website at nssf.org. But we refuse to be slandered by those who ignorantly or fearfully assume the worst about us. We are not the enemy. Gun control advocates know they must reverse the trend of increasing acceptance of lawful firearms ownership by the American public or lose that culture war that they have declared. And we as an industry have no choice but to respond, to fight, and to win. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is where the greatest challenge lies. We think of the upcoming elections as a presidential election, and indeed it is, but it is so much more. This election is about your entire government, right down to the local level, which ultimately will determine the courses of all of our lives, the fate of our industry, and the way of life we treasure. Just a few years ago, the U.S. Supreme Court held that the Second Amendment to the Constitution both recognizes and guarantees the individual right to keep and bear arms by only one vote. And there likely will be vacancies on the U.S. Supreme Court in the next term. So who will fill them? Justices nominated by the then President and approved by the Senate. If the then President's party also controls Congress, he or she will likely get his or her way. And if the Supreme Court then consists largely of judges whose views on lawful firearms ownership and the Constitution are hostile to ours, there goes the Second Amendment's individual protection of our rights. All the federal judges are also nominated by the President, and some of them have ruled directly opposite to what the U.S. Supreme Court has held. Only by electing a President who respects our rights are federal judges who share that philosophy likely to be appointed and confirmed? And please, don't forget all the presidential appointments made by the new president. The heads of ATF, IRS, EPA, OSHA, the Secretary of State, the UN Ambassador, the FTC Commissioner, the Cabinet Secretaries, Justice Department officials, and the next Attorney General and others. And we have all seen what effects these pres presidentially appointed officials can have on our businesses and the future of our nation. And of course, there's Congress. The entire House of Representatives and one-third of the Senate will be chosen by the people. In some states, judges and attorneys general are also elected. And they, too, have tremendous power and discretion to determine the scope of state laws governing our rights to lawfully sell, purchase, own, and use firearms for lawful purposes. And even mayors, town councils, and local planning and zoning boards can have a great effect on what we do. The range that can't be built, or the one that's closed because of some claim nuisance claim, or the ability to operate your business. All of these are in the hands of your local elected officials. The quality of life in your town is in their hands. And it's up to each and every one of us to help educate everyone who will listen and vote. Persuasive, fact-based, confident, one-on-one -on -one communications with customers, suppliers, friends, and family are the best ways to cut through the cloud of emotions surrounding our issues. 
If something is being proposed or discussed and it won't work, say so. Say why and say it often. This is particularly important when lawmakers and the media disparage your company, our industry, and your customers. Always beware of politician statements that begin with, well, I support the Second Amendment, but check out how they vote, not just what they say. Now, some politicians who would do us in have come right out now and said so. They've dropped any pretense of being respectful of lawful commerce and firearms, and they've made it easy to choose. But make your choice known by educating everybody in this industry through all the means at your disposal, and ultimately by voting and helping get out the vote. So, ladies and gentlemen, the state of our industry tonight is alert. Alert to the challenges we face. Alert to those who would destroy our livelihoods and our avocations. Alert to false friends and false promises and misrepresentations about us. Alert to the fact that elections, all elections, have consequences. And above all, alert to the new, promising world of millions of law-abiding American citizens who are joining our ranks in the honest, lawful, and safe ownership and use of firearms. If I may paraphrase Winston Churchill during some pretty dark days of his own, we may experience some setbacks, when a frightened and misled public acts without thinking. We may find that our path forward has been temporarily blocked. We may even have to endure some period of darkness before the facts and the truth about lawful respirons ownership again conquer the powerful forces set against us. The road ahead will be arduous and costly, but the people are never fooled for long. They and we will prevail. In that sense, our future has never been brighter. Public opinion surveys show a dramatic and unmistakable shift towards us and away from the prophets of doom. And you have seen those eager new faces in your stores and on the range. More newcomers, more women, more diverse participants in the recreational shooting sports, and more of the next generation carrying on that great time-honored tradition of personal safety and responsibility, that's the hallmark of our firearms industry, of which you should be so proud that you are all a part, just as we are so proud to have you as members of the National Shooting Sports Foundation, the true gun safety organization. Thank you very much. Thank you.